Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Welcome to our Top 5 Fridays Ski Industry News Videos. Bob, welcome back. Uh, I don't think I was here last week. I don't think you were here last week, so welcome back. Thanks. Uh, happy 4th of July weekend to our United States audience. Yep. Uh, we get a nice extra extra holiday day this weekend. And we get to do a parade through the center of Stowe. Yep, if you're in Stowe, uh, keep an eye out for us on the in the July 4th parade. Yep. I will be rollerblading. <laughs> I will be driving the van. <laughs> yeah, you know. You're going to be in a parade. you got a rollerblade, right? Yeah, hey, I guess so. I think so. <laughs> i gotta alt, I got to uh, modify my skates tonight, get the uh, blinking light-up wheels on yeah. there, and maybe some American flags, too. What about brakes? No. No brakes? No brakes. Okay. We don't need brakes. Anyways, uh, yeah, I hope you all have a, a good holiday weekend if you're here in the United States, um, and a great weekend for those outside of the United yeah. States. It's not like I hope you have a bad weekend <laughs> if you're not in the United <laughs> States. Uh, and anyways, I think with that, we can get right into the news. Um, so first topic of the week, Summit Daily. Uh, we get great content out of Summit Daily all the time. That was my favorite newspaper when I lived in Breckenridge. If it wasn't for Summit Daily, there might not be a Top 5 Fridays. I couldn't believe they had a daily paper. It's, 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 it's very great. impressive. Yeah, no, they do a great job out there. Um, so they've got an article kind of featuring some details from a call between Vail Resorts executives... Rob Katz was on the call, stuff like that, and their investors. Um, so those are always really interesting calls because, you know, they talk about some heavy financial yep. stuff. And there's kind of two notable takeaways from that call. Um, first is that Vail has approximately $1.3 billion in cash reserves, which is a lot of money. That's a lot. Um, and then the other kind of topic out of this was just emphasizing that the management team has a, you know, they, they remain intent on an aggressive acquisition plan. I mean, it's working out well for them so far. Yeah. Yeah, they're sitting on $1.3 right. billion dollars after yep. a, a couple of seasons altered by a pandemic. Right. So it seems like they're doing just fine. Um, so it kind of begs the question, and I would love to have you guys answer in the comments, what will Vail buy next? Right. I, almost, I wanted to make like an animated what will Vail buy right. next thing, and then make that like a reoccurring <laughs> segment on Top 5 Fridays. Uh, but yeah, leave a, leave a comment below. Let us know what mountain you think Vail will buy next. Uh, Bob and I are kind of chatting before we started filming, and I don't know if my opinion is popular, if, if it's the popular opinion or the unpopular opinion, but I'm just waiting for them to buy Smugs. Uh, yeah. Smuggler's Notch is the other side of the mountain from Stowe, so... Yeah, and my math was they bought Stowe for $50 million, Yep. and so divide that by, or 1.3 over 50 was 26, so they could buy Stowe 26, 26 times, times. Yeah. With, that, with that cash reserve, so. Yeah, so they got some, uh, some disposable income yeah, some deep to, pockets. to work with. <laughs> um, so it'll be pretty interesting to see what they do. They didn't really give away much on the call in terms of like what their strategies are, which makes sense. You know, they don't want don't want their competitors to know where they're going. Um, although Rob Katz did kind of hint towards potentially more Europe and Asia acquisitions. Yeah, which I think would make sense. Yeah, in Japan as well. They yeah. kind of it makes sense to spread things out. Like when they bought the Midwestern places, like <clears throat> the one close to Chicago. I I forget the name of it now, but then they just looped in all those Midwestern people that could now buy an Epic Pass. Right. And yeah, just their local mountain and take a vacation somewhere else. Right. And and they, they kind of specifically, or I don't know if it, if it was out of this, but there has been talk about how, um, you know, acquisitions in Asia and, and Japan and China and stuff like that would help support their, like, New Zealand and yep. Australia yep. resorts. So it all makes sense. Um but, yeah, big takeaway is, is Vail's doing just fine. A lot of money. Uh, second topic of the week. Uh, this one won't take very long to go through. Um, definitely would encourage you to follow the link and take a look at this yourself if you're interested in it because it's, it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, the Teton County Search and Rescue released a six-month incident report. Um, and I clicked through and, and pretty much read the whole report, not every single incident, um, but it's really, really interesting stuff. 
Um, basically, from December 1st to May 31st, there were over 40 rescue missions, totaling 1,812 man hours. So it's pretty substantial. Um, fun fact, I didn't mention this to you before, the Stow Mountain Rescue Team, I have some friends on the Stow Mountain Rescue Team, and they publish a similar report. I don't know if it's annual or what, but you can read all about the Stow Mountain Rescue things as well, and it's sweet. It's pretty interesting. You know, yeah. a lot of it's, you know, pretty boring stuff, but, you know, they definitely deal with some pretty, you know, high-level incidents around here, and I'm sure totally. out in the Tetons and the Wild West, there's you know, quite a few harrowing experiences as well. Yeah, bigger terrain out there too, yeah. often probably harder to get to people. Yeah. Although it's not exactly easy to rescue somebody from upper elevations yeah. and smugglers not right. because of how tight it is. Um, but yeah, I found it very interesting. You know, it kind of is a, a, a good way to highlight and remind everyone of, you know, it's dangerous. As soon as you go in the backcountry, Regardless of what you're doing, whether you're skiing or snowmobiling or horseback riding, because there's a bunch of different stuff in this report, yeah, you gotta you gotta stay safe. Um, yeah, bring all the necessary necessary safety equipment, all that stuff. Yeah. If you're interested, take a look at the report. Uh, they did a really good job putting it together. It's very well organized and it's pretty interesting to read through. Um, third topic of the week: Snowbird has unveiled a new cogeneration power system. Um, I think it was their only, the only United States-based ski resort with a power system like this, and maybe like the one of three in the world. So they're like off the grid. Yeah, like that's so, their yep, grid. Yep. So they have their own power grid, um, and they basically the way it works is they use three Caterpillar brand gas generators um, to create electricity. So those those generators are specifically creating electricity, and then they use the waste heat. So, you know, those generators are putting off a lot of yeah. heat, creating electricity, and that waste heat is captured and recycled and used to heat their buildings, heat water, um, and it essentially is eliminating the need for a secondary power yeah. source for heat and that kind of stuff. Um, so, pretty cool. Uh, some interesting stats here that I'll, I'll be fascinated if you understand what these mean. <laughs> uh, Snowbird's new system will save them 62,000 decatherms of natural gas. Did it, not, I have not heard of that unit It was of not a unit of measurement that I was familiar with either. Thankfully, uh, they put in that that's the equivalent of emissions from burning 4 million pounds of coal. Again, not a whole lot of reference for... What four million pounds of coal looks like? At least you know what a pound <laughs> looks like, and you know what coal looks like. So pretty cool, <clears throat> um, and it's great to just see like ski resorts kind of continuing to focus on sustainability, yep, um, fighting climate change, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, like we have the the windmill up on Bolton, top yep. of Bolton Valley, and there's I think Jiminy Peak in Mass. Yeah, is it Jiminy? I, I don't know. So. One of those in Mass has you know their own windmill, and you know whether they're offsetting or actually powering from there uh yeah it's all it's all good stuff yeah no it's great to see so great job snowbird um fourth topic of the week this one's just one of those feel-good stories uh i will probably get this pronunciation wrong with the first name fasu sohitra and pete mcafee uh completed a disabled ski descent down denali which is just unbelievable yeah um, both of these athletes are missing their right leg. So they climbed a 17,000 vertical foot mountain with one leg. Yeah. And then skied down, which is just unbelievable. Yeah, that is very impressive. Um, some really cool stuff on this. Like the report of the trip is really well done. Uh, outside online put it together. So pretty much everything outside online does is, is very well done. Yep. Um, so if you're interested, head on over to Outside Online, read more about it. Uh, some some interesting stuff. The last 3,000 vertical feet were completely socked in. They described it as climbing in a ping pong ball. Okay. Just white know, just everywhere. White just the dome. everywhere. Yep. And then the snow conditions were pretty bad. So they had to use like a secondary or maybe like tertiary, who knows. They had to use an alternative descent route, yep. which was more challenging, um, and I also think actually more direct, 
because uh, there was they cited that they were from summit to base in about 24 hours, which I think was was faster than they had anticipated. Yeah. Um, so really interesting stuff. Amazing, amazing accomplishment from those two athletes. Uh, and yeah, head on over to Outside Online if you want to read more about that. Definitely would encourage you to do so. And then lastly, we have our edits of the week. Um, first up, it's it's July. It's July 2nd. Yeah. So that's when we start seeing some ski movie trailers start popping up. Uh, and we got a teaser from TGR for Stoke the Fire. It's only about 60 seconds long, but... As you'd expect, it's some unbelievable skiing and, and really, really cool big mountain terrain. Yep. And that's what we what we see from TGR, and they do a great job. Um, next, we have sweet protection film called A Dollar Short. Uh, this was really, really good. Not like huge names for athletes and stuff like that, but the, the production quality and the cinematography and just the whole concept of the video is extremely entertaining. I haven't seen that one. You guys, well, you're going to have to watch it right after this. Um, about 11 minutes long, maybe 12 minutes long. Basically, they, they the premise is they rob a bank and then use all the money to go skiing and then run out of money. Okay. They have to sell all their stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, it's well done. It's, it's very well done. I, I really enjoyed watching it. Um, and then third edit of the week, we get a kind of a hype video for the little Cottonwood Canyon gondola, which... As followers of our Top 5 Fridays videos will know, I am a strong advocate for gondola. I am on Team Monorail. I feel like Team Monorail is out. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you're, uh, you're not picking the winning team, I don't think. I, I can still dream. <laughs> uh, but anyways, it does seem like we're getting closer and closer to a potential gondola in Little Cottonwood Canyon. Uh, and this video is kind of like split between actual footage and then like computer generated yeah. graphics um 32 passenger gondola so get, like a little tram yeah you get like you get heated seats and a cell phone charger that's pretty nice yeah it looks a lot like the peak to peak gondola at whistler okay if you've skied whistler i don't know if you've skied whistler no, never been there. anybody that's skied whistler you've probably ridden the peak to peak gondola it's it's really cool it's huge it's like can so you, big it looks fake can you see through the floor in that one yeah yeah, I can't remember if it was the whole floor or if there was kind of like a window that you could walk over. That'd be frightening. Look down. Uh, people have base jumped out of it, too, yeah. which is very illegal, so don't base jump <laughs> out of the peak-to-peak -peak gondola, but people have done it. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. I've seen a lot of people on social media talking about it over the past week or so. Um, and then finally, last edit of the week, we've had some pretty good mountain bike edits over the past, gosh, few weeks or a couple months now um, this is another one from Silver Star Bike Park in British Columbia uh, kind of celebrating a new trail that was helped designed by Brett Reeder who is pretty much the best free ride mountain biker in the world with a few people up there with him um, it's called Title Line the trail and it, it looks really cool a lot of berms and flowy stuff in the yeah. beginning and then it turns into like 50 foot jumps that I wouldn't hit at the end. Yeah, as impressive as these ski video edits are, the bike stuff really blows my mind. Yeah, those guys are incredible what they can do on bikes. Um, that's it for Top 5 Fridays. Thanks for joining us. At all. As always, Bob, you got any exciting weekend plans other than a parade? A parade. i uh, got some family coming into town. Uh, and that's about it. Sweet. Yeah. Well, pretty easy. Enjoy your holiday weekend, and we'll see you at the parade. Bye.